I'm Jeannie Ballou. Welcome to Jeannie on the Beat, talking with the talent, Ann Arbor's newest talk variety show, where I'll bring you up close and personal with fabulous writers and performers. My guests tonight are Lisa Gottlieb and Jeff McCabe, founders of Selma Cafe, a weekly breakfast salon that raises funds to support our local food economy and to build hoop houses for local farmers. In addition to their Selma Cafe activities, Lisa is the school social worker for the Washtenaw County Youth Center a Kripalu yoga teacher, and an artist. And Jeff has a background in engineering and residential remodeling. He's also a board member of the Ann Arbor People's Food Co-op and is on the steering committee of the Local Food Summit and the Homegrown Festival. So welcome, Lisa and Jeff. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, it's great Thank to have you. you. So tell us a little about Selma Cafe. What is it and how did it start? Selma Cafe is, as you said, a weekly breakfast salon that we have in our house on the west side of Ann Arbor every Friday morning from 6.30 in the morning till 10 a.m. And each week we feature a different guest chef who comes in and prepares breakfast using as much locally sourced uh, food and other ingredients as we can. Mm -hmm. um, we have guests come in and the suggested donation for breakfast is 12 to $15. Mm -hmm. and people come in and have a wonderful breakfast and coffee or tea or apple cider and uh, the money that we raise the first amount of money goes to purchase all the ingredients and all the food from local sources mm -hmm. um, from Ann Arbor Farmers Market from local farms from local dairies and mills people raising meat that sort of thing mm -hmm. so we're really supporting the local food economy um, and then the rest of the money goes to uh, create micro loans for farmers to purchase hoop house kits, which our volunteers then come together and build uh, so that we can have a year round growing season. Awesome. And it's an all volunteer organization. Selma Cafe is run by volunteers. Um, so, so it's we, non profit as yeah. opposed mm -hmm. to a restaurant, an right. official restaurant. Yeah, yeah it's non-profit. Well, this is really an interesting concept. Where did you come up with this idea? Did you dream this up on your own, or is it modeled after another one you've seen somewhere? Or? Um, not, not really modeled on anything <laughs> other than just you know working with what we thought, where we were at, where, what we thought we had. We'd been using the house as a resource uh, to support the community in other ways. We'd been having some fundraisers for specific organizations, um, one-time events, and following up the first one that we did like that, that was a breakfast, um, it just seemed like a good idea to, to keep it going in some way. And so mm -hmm. we took the opportunity to, uh, the, the, the next Friday after that event was my uh, 50th birthday party, mm -hmm. and, uh, or my 50th birthday, and uh, just decided to make that the party, uh, having another breakfast, and <laughs> had about 30 people come out to that mm -hmm. one. And uh, we, I think we, we had a few people cooking breakfast that morning, we had some leftovers from an event we had just done, and we called it Selma because our we have a neighborhood affiliation. Our the streets we live on Sewell, and then there's Eber White, Liberty, and Madison, and we had this affiliation of the so neighborhood. It's an acronym, so actually. it is. It's an acronym for okay. Selma. And so when we started to do this weekly salon, we decided to call it Selma Cafe. So this is just like the never-ending party. It started here and it just kept going. It is. I, I mean, it is, and that that was actually our attitude. We we wanted it to be really fun and our thing was we'll open our home and we'll organize it and facilitate it as long as we have volunteers coming in to do things mm -hmm. and um, when systems didn't work exactly right or things weren't happening the right way we would say okay if we're gonna keep this going we really need to have someone step up and do this and mm -hmm. people would step up and do it and how long has this been going on? it'll now? be two years in February Wow. Yeah. That's so exciting. Yeah. How many people actually come on average? Yeah, well, it's each been week? about uh, the, the most we've ever had is 186 at one time mm -hmm. in well, your house. Not, you no, know, they, 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 they they come through the come morning. Come throughout the time. Yeah. yeah. Right. So but, I mean, it's usually about 140, 150 people yeah. these days, and wow. you know, we can seat about uh, 30, 35 people at any one time. Mm -hmm. Although um, a few times lately, when it was really packed, we actually had people 
eating in the living room and we have a guest room on the main floor and we had some people in the guest room too. They were perched on the twin bed and there was a table there. You know, they were hungry and they didn't want to wait for a table, so that was fine. They were a group that would have been hard to seat yeah. otherwise and so it was I just natural I to do so. I can't imagine having, you know, 100 and, how many was it, 80? You said? Uh, 180. Like say, you know, but it's usually come into your house. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh my it's God. been between about 120 and 150 lately. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk turkey here. Tell me about the food. Oh, the so food's great. Can you describe a typical menu at sure. Sama? Yeah, I mean, we every week we have certain things on the menu that are standard. Um, I have a recipe for whole grain waffles that's really wonderful. Mm -hmm. So we always have waffles on the menu, and mm -hmm. we serve them with Michigan maple syrup and Calder butter and whatever fruit happens to be in season um, during the time period that we're offering breakfast. Although we do put up food, so sometimes we'll have peaches that we froze, you know, in August oh, and defrost Because it is December. Mm -hmm. yeah, Often, so. this time of year, we do uh, kind of a warm apple compote um, to go with the waffles. And then mm. I always make a, a wonderful, luscious bread pudding, a sweet mm. breakfast bread pudding. Love and bread pudding. Me too, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's great. And um, mm. depending on, again, what the fruit is, we I'll usually do either um, blueberry bread pudding or peach or, um, oh, pear. Pear bread pudding was really popular this fall. Mm. So those are always on the menu. Okay. For a while we had um, homemade granola and homemade yogurt as a special. Um, that comes and goes depending on the season. And then, yeah, I was gonna say. Then each week, you know, there's somebody else that comes in that that does a couple specials. Usually. The guest chef, then. And so uh -huh. they're, you know, they're thinking about what's in season as well, what they want to make. Mm -hmm. They'll often pair two things that are. Um, one might be something that more features a meat type of dish, mm -hmm. and the other vegetarian, or maybe one more sweet, one more savory. Mm -hmm. But uh, what's fun is that as it's. You know, chefs can sometimes be a little competitive with each other, and they like to try and... <laughs> like Iron Chef? Uh -huh. Yeah, they like to get the bigger numbers, uh -huh. and they like to... Like, these <clears throat> days, chefs want to think of something that hasn't already been prepared. And so, for example, mm. I don't know, a couple months ago, we had Chris Wick and Nick Romel come in, and they made Spam, homemade Spam. And I had never <laughs> had Spam in my life, but this was delish. They made mm. a meat version with wonderful locally sourced ham, mm -hmm. and then they made a, made a vegetarian Spam Only too. in Ann Arbor. It was mm -hmm. good. Vegetarian Spam. Mm -hmm. It was really fun. Oh so that was, you know, that was a more unusual one. Mm -hmm. We've had everything from um, uh, a, you know, scrambled eggs with um, roasted potatoes and bacon to um, Eggs Benedict with, mm -hmm. you know, a beautiful um, sauce and with uh, a slice of, you know, ham. So like really high quality yes. classics and mm -hmm. also some innovative some new, mm -hmm. new things. Yeah. So where do, you, where do you get your chefs? How do you, I mean, yeah. I, I've eaten at Selma. Oh. I, it's, it's high quality, excellent, excellent food. And so these aren't just like, you know, your local yokel from down the street. Some of them, yeah. sometimes they are, though. I mean, we, yeah, we yeah, started absolutely. out with kind of high-end chefs who ha were executive chefs or owned restaurants, and we still love having them. It's really fun, and it's fun for them. Eve Aronoff from, from Eve, from uh, Eve? the restaurant, she was, one of was our first. I was going to say, she, you know, uh, was one of the chefs yeah. that helped out with that, you mm -hmm. know, one-time event we did before we started the breakfast. So she came back and did a breakfast. She's so uh, generous. John Roos helped out of with that coffee. and came and did some oh, breakfast okay. at first. We've had Brandon Johns from the Grange. We've had uh, Thad Gillies from Logan. Um, mm -hmm. Dan Vernia, who's a wonderful chef. Um, who He used to work at Mind Body Spirits. He's been a regular chef. And they donate their time? They do. They this donate their time. Absolutely. Scott Here. McGinnis from wow. Tranche de Vie, who's a wonderful caterer, eat catering. Mm -hmm. They've come. Um, but Ma we've also... Monica Scholz and Emil. Yes, Monica Bosch. and Emil. Yeah. They're wonderful. They're really fun. Uh -huh. But a while ago, we really decided to try and get away from this guest chef mystique. And mm -hmm. we started to talk to people who we knew were really good cooks, who loved to cook, who maybe hadn't made food for 100 people, but were interested. And we encouraged them as well. And early on, there were times when Jeff and I chefed together because we wouldn't have a chef. Mm -hmm. These days, it's a little easier. You know, I have chefs booked up um, through February. And people are coming to us and saying, hey, I'd like to chef, which is great. That's, that oh, works that's really well. Dream. Yeah, that's your then ideal. it's like, oh, cool, let's get Knocking you. Knocking on your door. <laughs> yeah. I've heard about yeah. Selma. 
But I, I think it, we like that idea that it can be an opportunity for lots of different people with different ideas mm -hmm. about food to step forward mm -hmm. and, and do something that they want to mm -hmm. do. So it's, I'm already it's very, thinking uh -huh. of some people mm -hmm. I'm going to oh, recommend. Mm -hmm. And actually, good. just in the last month or so, we had a group of people who were approaching us saying, you know, you should have a vegan special. And mm -hmm. our response, anytime anyone says, but you sure, should do this, yeah, we, say, <laughs> we say, great, why don't you do it? Yeah, right. And so we had this group of people <laughs> who were every week supplying a dozen servings of um, a vegan special to kind of see, oh, was there interest or not? And I think people who, who um, follow a vegan diet, they don't get to go out that much. So I think for mm. people to be able to come and be part of this fun community that's so inclusive mm. with such a broad range of food, Interesting. it's been nice. Of course, mm. the way we operate is someone can order the vegan special with a side of bacon if they want. Because, <laughs> you know, we want people they to... They can just do that They if can they if they want. Yeah, because, you know, that's All how right. we do things. So why do you think that Selma has become such a phenomenon? Because it has. It has just grown and grown by word of mouth. What is it that makes it so special that people are really drawn to it? Well, I think in some ways the local foods movement over the last couple of years has been really in its infancy and there hasn't been that many opportunities to take part in it. You know, it's been a lot of uh, interest talk, uh, meetings, uh, conferences, etc. There's a few restaurants now that are really focused on that kind of thing. But uh, to have uh, something very tangible that people could attend and be part of and co-create, I think was, I think people were really hungry for that as much as for mm -hmm. the food as the community that it started to form. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the tangible aspect of the money going to build hoop houses and actually help these farmers, that it becomes one little version of the food economy we want to see happen, where you can mm -hmm. eat, have the money that you, know, you uh, donate or you know, pay for the food that you're uh, eating go right back into the food system and create the next uh, generation of that food system. I think it's multitasking menu. There you go. Yeah. So good. I yeah, think that's that's, that resonates with so people. Sort of the I ethic think. of it is is appealing. Is what you're saying? I think it's a it's a very inclusive environment. It's mm -hmm. very friendly. It's very inclusive. People can show up and not know anyone, and by the time they leave, they're making wonderful connections with people. And I think in our culture, with so much electronic communication. People are hungry for affiliation that's in person, mm -hmm. real life, about something that's so important. Mm -hmm. um, when you share food with someone and you're nourishing someone with food, it creates community and we're, we're really about building community. I love that. That is really beautiful. And mm -hmm. a couple of the places that people eat are very much you know, family dining, so it really does uh, uh, create that environment of people you know, sitting down with other people that they don't know necessarily and meeting them and, and starting the conversation. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a bunch of little two-top tables. You know, it's, it's a huge dining room table, and if someone's coming in and they've never been there before, we might say, oh, you know, sit here and, hey, everybody, this is Bill. Please welcome oh, Bill. Nice. And, and Really um, introducing yeah. them, which is certainly not going to happen in a restaurant. Exactly, and it is, <laughs> it's all family style. So. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. I'd like you to meet ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so, it's friendly. It's pretty, pretty accurate, yeah. <laughs> actually. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, speaking of that, here you are trusting the public. You have total strangers walking into your home on a weekly basis. What kind of concerns did you have when you started this? Or did you just sort of go into it blindly and it's worked and you, you know, haven't had any issues? We, we've always had a pretty open household with people coming and going and people mm -hmm. staying with us and always making tons of food for family and friends and mm -hmm. um, I, they're not strangers you know they come in and they're they're welcome and for the know, most part yeah it really it, started out with uh, you know we, we've thought of it as community rather than public for sure yeah. and because you know it was people we knew that were also very interested in this foods movement mm -hmm. They're friends of ours, and and most often, you know, our friends coming and them bringing their friends, and that, you know, is, uh, so is an exponential it's process. Yeah. I mean, people like <laughs> your friend of a friend sent mm -hmm. me, and right, or well, they read about people are coming they with read their us. friends. You know, is really yeah. the most common. You know, you see uh -huh. somebody who maybe came with somebody one mm -hmm. week, and they're bringing mm -hmm. somebody the next, and yeah. so it's it's very uh, building on this community, and people really seem to uh, to to. Uh, become uh, some some kind of regular often. Mm -hmm. I, people people usually it, we don't have people just coming in off the street. They've read about us or they've heard about us or they've got a friend who they come with or a friend has told them about it. So by the time they actually come to the house, 
they're, they don't feel like a stranger. They feel like someone who's hmm. there to have some fun and experience the food and the community. That was my experience, yeah. I can oh, say. I'm glad. And I loved it. I met wonderful new people and had a great conversation. And I just was sorry it ended at 10. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to yeah. go all day long. Yeah. I'm sure that would be fun. It, sometimes, sometimes it does. It does. <laughs> yeah. You can like stay and clean up with a great, another great set yeah. of community. <laughs> yes, that you it's can true. Meet. It's true. Yeah. It's true. So speaking of that, what uh, kinds of jobs do your volunteers do? Mm -hmm. They. As far as Selma Cafe, we have volunteers who come on a Thursday night before the Friday breakfast to prepare mm -hmm. for Friday breakfast. So cooks. every week we have a Thursday prep party. And the chefs show up with all the food and ingredients or when I'm sourcing food, we have it already. You know, I get the menu ahead of time so I can get everything that the chefs need. And then the volunteers prep all the food under the guide of the, the chefs. And so the Thursday night prep is great for people who can't come on a Friday morning necessarily. Mm -hmm. Um, but can come Thursday night. And then Friday, it's primarily we have servers, we have coffee runners, we have dishwashers, um, we have sous chefs, we have uh, someone who's dedicated to the waffle and bacon preparation. Just like in a restaurant. Yeah. Pretty much, same, yeah. much same different roles. Different roles. Mm -hmm. a, well, a greeter and yeah, we have, we have greeters, hostess, uh, so to you know, speak. Host. And then, to me, one of the most valuable parts is um, the, the cleanup crew that comes around 9.30 <laughs> or 10 and they stay and clean until the kitchen is clean and the mudroom where people come in in the dining room. That's the most so, valuable job in my household too, oh, so I can relate to that. Yeah, I mean, it's really, for me, I need to be able to have our kitchen be yeah. in some lens of order so that right. the rest of the week we can live in our house. You can, yeah, go yeah. back and to living there. Though That's the volunteers who are particularly about Selma Cafe. Then we have a whole other slew of volunteers who come to do the hoop house builds and right. we have other Certainly fundraisers. overlap between the two they groups, do. but mm -hmm. you know, another, another activity. Yeah. Um, and we have fundraisers them. throughout the year for other things and volunteers can come and help with those fundraisers as well. Well, so in addition to the food being delicious at Selma, it's also unique that you use almost um, c completely all locally mm -hmm. grown produce and ingredients. Why, for those of you who aren't really familiar with these concepts, why is it important that we support local farmers? Well, um, I think that's an individual choice for, for everybody. Everybody has a different set of priorities around what they uh, think is important uh, to eat. Uh, certain people think that certain health choices about the types of foods they eat are the most important things. Um, I think for a long time we've gotten used to the idea that almost anything can come to us from anywhere around the world. And um, that still seems to be true for the most part with uh, oil still being attainable and not uh, terribly expensive. I think that we're going to find though that um, uh, as some of these <laughs> things we've taken for granted uh, change, it's going to be more and more important to pay attention to the to the food around you and the food you can eat mm -hmm. uh, locally and seasonally. And um, there might be political reasons that someone thinks that Im that's important. Uh, for me, it's just really fun. Uh, mm -hmm. I like to know who grew my food. I like to have a relationship with them. I like mm -hmm. to see what grows around me seasonally, uh, what, what works in this climate. It's, uh, and then even noticing sometimes things that are difficult to source and starting to figure out, well, why is that? And where is the closest place it comes from? It's just been a real uh, interesting uh, mm -hmm. learning experience for me. Connecting. I think too mm -hmm. that food security is becoming more and more important that people are getting food from so far away and they don't know how it's grown or mm -hmm. how it's produced and mm -hmm. people have gotten terribly terribly sick from food that one would think is healthy but in fact is contaminated mm -hmm. and we're invested in knowing our farmers and knowing who's producing and growing the meat who we're um, sourcing from so I think it feels a little safer food-wise. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, it's wonderful for the economy. I, mean, yeah, I was going to say, like, for quite a while, it seems like the people who are thinking about economic development are trying to throw a lot of money at some uh, high tech, or they're trying to revive the auto industry, where uh, those jobs are very uh, transportable. They can mm -hmm. Even if you invest a lot in creating something in your community, it might just disappear. Uh, with another corporate decision uh, of some kind. But farms are rooted to the soil, mm -hmm. uh, you know, literally mm -hmm. <laughs> as well as figuratively. And um, supporting uh, these farmers and the people who uh, might really emerge as like a, a value added food system where they're processing, making other great things out of that food mm -hmm. are really rooted to the community. Um, 
and um, uh, so I think there's a lot of opportunity for jobs and uh, and a lot of really great, uh, interesting uh, diversity in the community through this as well. All right. Uh, um, <coughs> I was going to add just briefly that, mm -hmm. that in addition to eating locally, we really try and eat as seasonally as we can as well mm -hmm. because it's much easier to source. Um, if we're sourcing food locally, then eating seasonally is going to be part of that. So we put food up and... Mm -hmm. and um, can and freeze. Can and and that's so awesome. We have a wide variety of food that we can I eat. I salute you. <laughs> well, we have our, our volunteers help a lot with that, Oh, too. that's, that's it. I've got to get some of those in yeah. huh? yeah. <laughs> my house. So tell us about this 10% Washtenaw <clears throat> campaign. What is that? Well, uh, uh, again, I think it really comes out of the economics of, of what this can be. Uh, for the local food summit last year uh, that happened on March 2nd, uh, some of us uh, started thinking about this idea of this campaign. Uh, when you start to look at, at the numbers, uh, people in Washtenaw County eat a billion dollars worth of food a year. Wow. It adds up when there's you know, hundreds of thousands of people. And um, so 10% of that you know, would be a hundred million dollar a year food economy that could be here instead of uh, mostly in California and uh, Mexico, mm -hmm. let's say, right now. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we're looking to work toward creating that over a 10 year period of time. And it would mean lots of farms. Uh, one thing is that we uh, can grow a lot of food in the middle of the summer here in Michigan, but um, that's one of the reasons we looked at hoop houses as a way to really spread uh, food production over the entire year. So, so that's one aspect that you know we can look at about how do you create a, a viable food economy throughout the year. So tell us what the hoop is a hoop house <laughs> and what's all the hoopla about hoop houses? Mm. Hmm. Well, they're, they're, they're springing up in, 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 in the conversation. And uh, they're basically just a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the term hoop house has come to connotate the, t the way this greenhouse is being used, that it's a relatively simple structure, low cost structure, rather than some elaborate uh, thing that might be heated and lit year round growing tomatoes maybe for, for mm -hmm. food production or cactuses for, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, enjoying, uh, this is something that is going to grow just specific types of food in specific parts of the year, just using the, the sun to heat it and, and light it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, so uh, a hoop house um, that we've been helping build often is about a 3,000 square foot structure. The material is a lot like a fence post, a galvanized uh, steel tube. Um, the hoop, I guess, name is just kind of the shape of this, that it uh, mm -hmm. can be just the regular hoop shape or uh, a gothic shape that sheds snow a little bit better. Mm -hmm. uh, about 30 feet wide and about 100 feet long with a, mm -hmm. with a pretty simple piece of plastic pulled over it that that um, creates a buffer from the weather mm -hmm. in the middle of winter that allows the ground to stay uh, uh, unfrozen mm -hmm. and food to be uh, able to be harvested every day of the year. That's exciting. And I know you have a big extravaganza coming up this summer. 20 hoops in 20 days yeah. hoopla. So we're very um, excited about that. Tell us about that. <laughs> this is a plan to create and build um, 20 hoops in 20 days okay. and get them started and get them built over the summer. You know, instead of doing it uh, once a week over a period of time, do it through the summer. I, I get summers off so I can work more steadily during the summer. Yeah, um, I mean, if we go back to that 10% wash, no, I mean, it really, uh, to build a food system like that, it's going to take hundreds of farms instead mm -hmm. of a, a little bit, you know, a dozen or so maybe we have of really uh, substantial farms in Washington County. Um, uh, maybe with a thousand or more hoop houses. And so mm -hmm. to get there, we, we want to continue to uh, mm -hmm. increase the amount of capacity we can build. So far from the breakfast, we've built 10 hoop houses, mm -hmm. uh, so about uh, 27,000 square feet of mm -hmm. four season production space. Two of them That's are great. In Detroit, in Corktown, um, mm -hmm. and then the rest are in Ann Arbor or close by. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. That's Thanks. exciting. So, um, mm -hmm. uh, people have expressed an interest in supporting these beyond just the breakfast funds, and mm -hmm. so it's been all the breakfast funds so far that have gone into these loans. Mm -hmm. People are starting to lend money to the program as well to co-land out on these which mm -hmm. expands the, um, the number we can build and then when you start to look at how are we going to build this many in one year it mm -hmm. like Lisa was saying it looks like it'd be an awful lot of Saturdays <laughs> to give up yeah. to do it so <laughs> made sense to just try to create this event that can kind of build energy around it itself mm -hmm. and so on June 15th we're going to start 
and in 20 consecutive days, we're going to build uh, 20 hoop houses, ending on July 4th. With, uh, we'll have a big, oh, big, party big party on the 4th of July to celebrate food independence. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So. How exciting. So where are you going to get the money for these? You've got already the donations, mm -hmm. but is that probably not enough for this? So where else? You, you mentioned something um, uh, previously about the Farmers Fund. Tell me about that. Well, so we uh, had one of our first out, you know, um, fundraising events uh, for the organization to talk about what the organization can do above and beyond people just putting money in the jars for the breakfast. We had it at uh, Grange Kitchen and Bar, thanks to Brandon and his staff there. And it was the launch of this Farmer Fund campaign. And uh, since we launched, about $45,000 has been pledged wow. by individuals. Those loans are about to go uh, into place. And uh, how much do you need? Well, um, <laughs> so to do all of that, you know, it'll be it'll be another hundred thousand dollars probably. Mm -hmm. um, what it did is it allowed us to back fund a lot of the projects that we've done. They pledged against those specific projects and said, "I like this farm. I like what they're doing. I mm -hmm. want to put some money in to that." They're lending money at two percent that uh, they'll get a return, you know, on investment when when the, the farmer finishes paying back their loan and then hopefully they'll be able to reinvest again in another mm -hmm. project. But for now it allows us to free up some of those breakfast yeah. funds, look at how we can take those and, and the funds that are still coming in, put that in mm -hmm. the pot again and then go out to the community again mm -hmm. and say can you match us on all these hoops that we want to build uh, in 2011 as well. well. How much does it cost to build one hoop house? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well it, it can vary greatly with the size of, of the structure. Eight to fifteen thousand oh, dollars. The ones mm -hmm. we're building are around eight or nine thousand dollars, or about three dollars a square foot. Wow. What if it's you know somebody like me? I'm mm -hmm. I'm not a carpenter, and I don't have you know big strong hands. <laughs> well, how you yeah. know what the hoop can I do to yeah. help on this hoop house? <laughs> on the hoop houses, absolutely. I mean, there's lots of different jobs, and um, we have people of all ages and all physical abilities and experience coming, and there's always a job, whether it's um, Actually, people who are strong and really physical and like to dig post holes, that's fine. Some people just put the bows together using, you know, hand tools. Um, there's always food preparation because we always have a big party at the <laughs> yeah, end of the day. food so, and music, right? Right, we have music. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I've seen your mm -hmm. pictures. Well, this is so exciting. You guys have so many fun things going. I really want to thank you for coming thank and you. being here tonight. And I want to thank you, Ann Arbor, for joining us. So remember to tune in the second and fourth Tuesday of each month at 10.30 p.m. or look for rebroadcasts of Jeannie on the Beat at various times throughout the week. Ciao, Ann Arbor.